Well, I went to the Citadel after my father and my godfather got a hold of me. Because I was shipping out as a fireman, oiler, water tender from 1948, about October, on an army transport, the Gothels. And people didn't believe me. They checked the manifest, and there I am. And then my father and my godfather, the 6'3 cavalry officer, was one of the regimental commanders of the Imperial God, was Ryan Gale, one of his chiefs of staff. They actually slammed me up against the wall and said, do you know who you are? And my father had a lot of friends, my papa had a lot of friends who were Citadel grads, a lot of naval you know, physicians and all that, and that's where I started. Okay. What do you love most about Columbus? Uh, the people, for one. They've always been more than gracious to me. Uh, the climate, I'd like some snow, but uh, the climate uh, that, that people are accepting. What other city, let me ask you, what other city will reach out to people um, Southerners, old families, um, and and support um, uh, my appointment of Isaiah Hughley as a city manager. What other city will have breakfast on race relations? <coughs> what other city would work with the late Pastor Flakes and and Councilor uh, Mayor Pro Tem Evelyn Pugh and Carmen Caveza and others to start? Um, uh, one Columbus. Yes, you were mayor during the <coughs> shooting death of Kenneth Walker, and it was a challenging time for the whole community. Sure. But I would imagine particularly challenging for leadership in the community. All right. So how do you how do you keep a diverse community from kind of from fracturing or further? Fracturing? Well, let me tell you what we did. I got called by um, Jim Jackson, Colonel Jackson, Carmen Trevez immediately. We were in New York. We were in New York. It was in December. Cut our vacation, came up. First thing Stacy and I did, we went to see the walkers. We spent about an hour with them. It was tragic. And, and, and Carmen and I know something about arms, and we know about automatic and semi-automatic and the pops and all that. And I thought that was bad. And I told Carmen, and he'll verify it, talk to the sheriff and have an investigation, GBI. We've got to have an investigation. You can't be, and they ended up, because if that, that wasn't going to happen as public safety director, even though the sheriff and the marshal were elected officials, I was going to call the governor. And, and we did. And then uh, we had a federal investigation. Then the other thing we did, we had breakfast. Uh, Calvin Smyre, Pastor Force, the Flakes. You bring good people together. You get from all walks of life, the founders of of Urban League, etc. And people trust me because I've been part of the Urban League, and still am. And you talk, and you get it out, and then you were able to get a grant from the Turner Foundation to create um, uh, uh, sensitivity training at Columbus State University, and you told the police officers who were not involved that everybody, except the lower ranks, will go and get sensitivity training, and then we will teach that. Uh, the sheriff came on board. And, um, and so you create a climate where, one, you don't deny anything, you care, you have transparency, and, uh, and people trust you because they know who you are. They know you're not a sham. You put your money where your mouth is. They've seen you. They've seen you being with them. They've seen you participating. Why didn't this become Ferguson? Because we cared. Because we cared, and we were transparent, and we did everything we could to make sure that this city wasn't going to erupt in flames, and it didn't, and it did not. And uh, I know that Mr. Jackson came down and uh, and all of that. Then he said the mayor wouldn't meet with him. I think those are the words he said. Well, hell, I was never told I'd meet with anybody, with anybody. But it didn't become a flaming city because we and the people cared, black and white. And that I love. Fort Benning and the Maneuver Center of Excellence. I love the people there, whether they were draftees or volunteers. I love them. Now, from an economic side, obviously, uh, there are millions of dollars that are poured into Columbus. People live here. People. We have approximately 50,000 retirees in the uh, metropolitan statistical area. And forgive me, I may be wrong by a couple of thousand. They use Fort Benning for the medical and for um, uh, the commissary and the PX and they attend situation with the international students and all that. So from an emotional viewpoint, Fort Benning is very important because it feeds in to the patriotism of, um, 
of the people in Columbus and the Valley. And then from a practical reality, Fort Benning is a great uh, economy for Columbus. Retiree jobs, wives, uh, purchasing, so whatever you want to think about, Fort Benning is such as an Aflac or a Synovus or a Carmike or something like that. It is economic development. I know about sequestration, I know about this, but here's why the Army should not cut Fort Benning or diminish. Why? Because the people, because Fort Benning is Columbus and Columbus is Fort Benning. That's what it is. And the people in Columbus uh, with alacrity accept the soldiers and their family. I remember when I got to be mayor, uh, when God blessed me for that, and we were starting, um, forget about Desert Storm, Desert Chill, we were starting Iraq. <coughs> remember that? Yeah. And I said, I don't care what your political leanings are. I said this publicly. But I remember Vietnam, and that will never happen in Columbus. Never. We will reach out. The churches and the synagogues and the mosques will open their arms to the people of Fort Benning, which they did. Pastoral Institute, all the counseling, the, the, the businesses, they embrace them. We embrace them. And so it's very emotional because you cannot think of Columbus without Fort Benning. Now, if, God forfend, uh, the Army has to reduce, they're going to reduce. And I don't think that the... Um, Armor school is going to go away. The infantry school is going to go away. When I was mayor, when Brack came in, and how we worked that. Uh, thank God for Carmen Caveza and uh, working with the chamber and Melton and and Ken Lore and uh, and um, Wojciechowski and all of that. But but, you, I mean, but if it goes down, uh, people may lose jobs because there'll be some retirees who are not ready to retire but have enough to retire civilians, so they will retire. People on post. Yeah, and they will, and and the, the civilians uh, may lose jobs. I don't know how many positions will be lost because some jobs are unfilled now, so they may not be filled. They may be eliminated permanently in that sense. Um, the soldiers coming in may be reduced. In other words, instead of, instead of having X number of people attending the infantry basic courses and <coughs> and and um, and the one station unit training, etc. You have X now, it might go down to Y. You have X going to armor, you might go down to Y. Accessions of officers. Look at the Citadel. Only about 40% go on active duty. Yeah. I'm, I'm still a soldier. I'm on the retired list, but a regular officer is an officer of the United States. A politician is a servant of the people. A servant. You go back to the Greek uh, uh, background of the term politician. It's a server of the people. And you're still doing that by helping and working with other organizations on Port Columbus and, and on the Infantry Museum and the Rangers and, and all of this, uh, the Symphony Board and, and, and just providing um, an environment for people to have a good life in Columbus. Did the loss hurt? <coughs> at first, yeah. Yeah, at first. It, it, really, it really did because uh, there were some other things I wanted to do but um, it was a rejection, right? Yeah, you could say that absolutely. By by, as you know what Sam Rawls used to say, God rest his soul. He said there was a sickness in the air. Uh, a lot of voters were sick of Bob, <laughs> <laughs> and and I started thinking about it. So after about an hour, I'm back to being me, and uh, and the next day was hilarious because I got up. You know, to go to the office and uh, laughing and all that. And Stacy thought something was happening. This guy is, is going bonkers. And she said, are you okay? I said, yeah. Um, and, and, and not to slight Mayor Weatherington, who's, who's a great guy, he and his family. I said, it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to be able to keep all the promises that he made. And I'm laughing and left out and the rest is history. You march on. That's another thing that the Army teaches you. And my father, and, and, and my pop, and all that, and, and, and General Patton. Everybody is going to get down somehow, sometime. But it's not that you're down; it's what happens when you're down. Are you going to bring yourself up and dust yourself off and continue to march on, 
or you're going to wallow in self-pity and whine and criticize and condemn. And here... You could have become very bitter. Oh, no, that, that's just not in me. Not as a Christian. That's just not in me. And so one of the things that motivated me throughout my life is my family. There is no way in hell I'm going to disgrace them with my life and my grandchildren. But the beauty of my family <laughs> is that I don't care what I've achieved, whether I was legislative council, the secretary, taking congressional people, Barbara Jordan and, and, uh, and uh, all of these greats to Europe on, on fact-finding trips. You know, you, your head could blow. It's sometimes ego, well, you read about what General Law. Sometimes it goes to people's heads. But when you have a wife and a family like Rob and Kathy and Meg and Bill and the grandchildren like Gigi who will put you down and say Papu chill out and Stacy says Bob just as she did this morning think of what you say keep your mouth shut uh, many people know you some even like you relax uh, you become a, a natural human being so right? Stacy is very much a part of uh, the everything. She's everything. Oh yes. Oh yes. <coughs> yeah. She's great. Are you slowing down at all? No, not as long as God gives me uh, my health and uh, and uh, and the encouragement of Stacy. Oh heck no. But so, I mean, I don't stay here from uh, uh, dawn to dusk. But uh, I pick and choose and have a great time. <laughs>